Let's love. see what Steven Crowder has to say. Says, okay. I came over here because YouTube was being, uh, you know, they were I love this. Watch what Steven Crowder is going to say about this. My favorite thing is like all the people who just like love Joe Rogan <laughs> coming out to just defend Joe Rogan uh, unconditionally, no matter what the f happens. Let's see what happens. I mean, I suspect he's going to say, wow, a guy apologizes for like getting some stuff wrong, even though he's not getting anything wrong, really is actually some completely right censoring me too much the premise was that spotify would be free and open they wouldn't bother me and tell me what to say now it's becoming too constraining now it's too much of a headache i'm gonna walk and go do my own thing somewhere else sue me you're playing with fire spotify this is the disconnect between the woke Frank companies who pull the strings and the woke people who work in your offices and the people who listen to spotify <laughs> Joe Rogan responded to Spotify announcing, they announced yeah. that they're going to label, and this is just so silly now, label certain content you, to man. be sensitive that it might, what is their official label? Do we know what it is, what the Spotify label is? Can someone bring it up? Warning. Yeah, we'll have to bring it's it up. It's a warning because God forbid adults actually are able to watch somebody with whom they disagree, right? We dude, 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 dude. There's plenty of diversity of ideas on spotify and a million different goddamn podcasts bro why do they always have to do this why it's like oh dude, god forbid people watch something that they disagree with no that's not it dude spotify not taking joe rogan's episodes off the platform and instead just slapping a warning label on it is for the benefit of people like you so you can continue spreading misinformation you idiot and he knows this too he's like oh i don't even want a fucking label on it yeah it's a parental advisory sticker okay it doesn't stop anything we need to right, now yeah. warn adults. Remember back when it was Tipper Gore and it was video games? They started self-regulating, saying E for everyone. And, you know, okay, Duke Nukem, all right. We'll put a 17 plus on there. There are strippers and nukes. So, okay. <laughs> but right now we're talking about adults needing to be. Spotify said it deleted 20,000 podcast episodes. Believers are spreading misinformation about COVID-19, including 40 episodes of JRE 40. Wait, they deleted 40 episodes of JRE? That's crazy. He warned because they might hear a differing opinion. So Spotify said they were going to slap a warning label on these kinds of uh, podcasts and uh, like Joe Rogan. And uh, Joe Rogan responded uh, to this and discussing uh, COVID-19 and the reaction. I think there's a lot of people that have a distorted perception of what I do, maybe based on sound bites or based on headlines of articles that are disparaging. Um, the podcast has been accused of spreading dangerous misinformation, dangerous. specifically about two. We already saw this. We're not watching all that. You know, he just that's just conjecture. Well, it means that instead of the vaccine being able, excuse me, it means for instead of the virus being able to hop from person to person to person to person, spreading and spreading, sickening some of them, but not all of them. And the ones that it doesn't sicken don't know they have it. And then they give it to even more people because they didn't recognize they were right. Instead of the virus being able to hop from person to person to person, potentially mutating and becoming more virulent and drug resistant along the way. Now we know that the vaccines work well enough that the virus stops with mm. every vaccinated person. A vaccinated person gets exposed to the virus. The virus does not infect them. The virus cannot then use that person to go anywhere else. It cannot use a vaccinated person as a whole. Oh yeah, this is like right when the vaccines first came out. This is before the Delta variant. I cannot believe I'm about to defend Rachel Maddow, but for the record here, the pre-Delta variant cases for breakthrough were incredibly fucking low. The only way to massage this fucking argument better is all she had to say was, it is incredibly unlikely for someone who is vaccinated to get COVID and give it to other people. And she was wrong, especially with the Delta variant, which we know led to plenty of breakthrough cases. But even with the Alpha variant, there was a likelihood, like a very, very low likelihood. But she even mentions the likelihood of mutations. Nah, there's no way of defending that. It's she goof, but that's fucking idiotic. It's idiotic to look at this and go, oh, dude, we got him. It's March 29th, 2021. Vaccines have first come out. The efficacy is incredibly high for the alpha variant to not get the alpha variant and to not spread the alpha variant. The only way that this would have been 100% true is if she said there's still a likelihood, albeit an incredibly slim one. Host to go get more people. That means the vaccines will get us to the end of this. Now, I and at the time, there was no consensus on whether or not we could reach herd immunity. Because I even remember at the time, the Daily straight up saying, some scientists believe we could reach herd immunity at 
Some scientists believe we can reach herd immunity at 70%, and some scientists do not believe we can reach herd immunity at all, given the concept of new variants that could be more deadly or more transmissible. You want to take a minute to talk about something, you know, that that little boy was addressing. Let's analyze this both. Dangerous and misinformation. Misinformation means that the information, generally speaking, is not only false, but knowingly false uh, misinformation, right? Certainly that's how it's been labeled uh, here over the last several years with COVID. Okay, now dangerous. Dangerous would imply what? That it causes damage to people. Now, let me give you one side that's been labeled misinformation and dangerous. And this is important. Just stay with me here really quickly. By the way, if you're still going to Steven Crowder for information about COVID when he's gotten dunked over and over again, like he's been put in the fucking dunk tank numerous times. This is a guy, remember, kept claiming that the COVID fatality numbers were false. I remember because I cover him. Most people have already forgotten this. But Steven Crowder in 2020 would do change my mind segments in the middle of fucking COVID where he would go out in public and would literally say the COVID fatalities are a lie. Dude, he's out of his mind. This is insane. Why do people do this? Why do the people do this? And Elon Musk did this too. Why? Something that is so easy to fucking destroy. So easy. So easily destroyed. The argument that is so laughably wrong. An argument that he's kind of moved away from. All you need to do in that situation is look to the fucking excess deaths. Why are there excess deaths that perfectly align with COVID fatalities then? Why are people dying? Joe Rogan and ourselves. So, for example, Peter McCullough, we had on the show, okay? Uh, long before uh, Joe Rogan, I think we were the first people to, 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 to have him on. What did we say? We said people who want to get vaccinated should uh, get vaccinated. People who are vulnerable, who are immunocompromised, it, ma it makes sense. People who are elderly, it makes sense. Uh, that being said, we don't know the efficacy of the vaccines yet. And it doesn't seem as though, for example... What we would say is doesn't seem like it stops transmission entirely, but it seems like it lowers hospitalizations. Also, we don't know the long term side effects. That's a fact. OK, that's considered misinformation and dangerous. Who does that hurt? What they claim is it could hurt somebody because maybe somebody won't get vaccinated. OK, here's the thing. There's a difference between that encouraging someone to be skeptical off the bat and instilling which is what Fauci, what you just saw Rachel Maddow do, what all of media did, all of mainstream media, all of uh, the big tech companies. How is this guy claiming that he was ever correct about any part of the misinformation and conspiracies that he spread throughout the entire duration of the pandemic, turning around and being like, well, we got him, boys, pack it up. Rachel Maddow was wrong. She said that you 100% could not get COVID back in fucking March. I wonder how many times Rachel Maddow has done coverage showing. Let's take a look. I fucking hate Rachel Maddow too. I cannot believe I'm defending her right now. Jesus Christ, I hate this. I hate this. This is like hurting my fucking very soul, my very being, my existence. Let's take a look at Rachel Maddow's breakthrough cases coverage. Talked about it on the December 23rd. Talked about it on July uh, 29th. Talked about on MSNBC. U.S. Surgeon General explains how to reduce breakthrough cases. July 19th. Ooh, as early as July 29th. Interesting. The Washington Post has obtained internal CDC documents that says the Delta variant of COVID-19 not only spreads much more easily than other variants, but may cause more severe illness as well. But the CDC still has not made this data public. Here's one slide from the CDC presentation published by The Post tonight. It summarizes the finding of the Delta variants this way. Quote, Delta is different from previous strains. Highly contagious, likely more severe. Breakthrough infections may be as transmissible as unvaccinated cases. So it turns out when new information came out, Rachel Maddow did not continue to lie like Steven Crowder does. A false sense of of confidence. They told you, you get vaccinated, you can't get sick. They told you, you get vaccinated, you can't spread it. So the vaccinated could go to Thanksgiving parties. The vaccinated could go out publicly. The point is that was untrue and that could actually spread the virus because people have a false sense of security. What's more damaging? Yeah, except that's not what happened. Even the fucking video you're showing yourself is operating on old data. There is no reason to fucking defend this. It's wrong on the margins that the alpha variant you could still get, but it was incredibly unlikely. But other than that, the Delta variant was the one that was actually capable of penetrating through the fucking COVID vaccine and creating breakthrough cases. But even in that circumstance, the likelihood that you would get it and spread it was still lower. 
telling your son to avoid scenarios where he may be bullied or telling your son who you know will get his ass kicked that he is invincible so we should walk right up to that bully and tell him to stop. Then he gets his ass kicked. The point is a false sense of security, which is what has been given to people, is far more dangerous and has harmed. Wait, what the fuck? False sense of security? Dog, this is an internal contradiction. If COVID is capable of being damaging and scary and spreading and killing people, then how the fuck could you ever fucking advocate against ma uh, masks and mandates and lockdowns? Steven Crowder is literally an anti-masker and a fucking anti-lockdown guy now talking about how damaging COVID is to the American public and how irresponsible Rachel Maddow was in the same fucking convo. How can you literally be an anti-vaxxer? Like the, the contradiction is so obvious. It makes no sense. How can you fucking literally be a Stephen Carter fan and go, yeah, that's right. Actually, uh, Rachel Maddow did create a, a false sense of uh, confidence in people who were vaccinated. They were the real ones who were spreading COVID. How? How? Far more people than people like myself, Gerald, Dave, Joe Rogan, saying, you know what? We don't have all the info yet. What? But you were never pro lockdowns. You were literally an anti-masker. Steven Crowder is literally making it seem like in this first six minutes of this video, Steven Crowder is making it seem like he was pro lockdowns and he was just skeptical of the vaccines. Let's look up Steven Crowder anti lockdown. YouTube said it removed a video uploaded by conservative commentator Steven Crowder because they said that the death rates of COVID are less severe or equally as severe as a common cold or seasonal flu. He just totally fucking lied about the impact of COVID. He also was an anti-masker. And I know he's anti-lockdown. So why the fuck is he now acting like Rachel Maddow was letting people go out uh, and, and fucking die? It was uh, announced yesterday that Spotify would have these warnings. I don't think they've gone into practice yet, but this is from Spotify's website, Dangerous Content. And they have COVID down here. Content that promotes dangerous, false, or dangerous, deceptive medical information that may cause offline harm or poses a direct threat to public health. Promoting or suggesting <laughs> that vaccines approved by local health authorities are designed to cause death. What? Encouraging people to purposely get infected with COVID-19 in order to build My immunity dad, to it. So it says it may not be limited to, so they're kind of hedging it there. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's what yeah, of course they're hedging it because you fucking dumbasses consistently figure out new ways of lying. That's why. I don't understand. The reason why these websites have to come up with like a, a term of service that's vague is because like anti-vaxxers literally come up with new shit like on a daily basis. They're super creative when it comes to like new ways of lying about how the vaccines are going to fucking murder you. I don't know what's the case with today's generation. A lot oh, of young kids like to virtue signal Think about it. You have anti-fascists, for crying out loud, yeah. supporting mandates. You have rage against the machine demanding that unvaccinated people be quarantined and locked down. I don't know if it's the same well, with I there. put Rachel Maddow, please stay out of my bird feeder every morning, and she's there every morning. Well, okay. <laughs> she's a contrarian. That big <laughs> will eat so much bird feed. I know. I love the look on her face, by the way. It's not going <laughs> to hop around and get to, like, other variants that become more Can you imagine? It's anti-fascist supporting public health measures. What the fuck? That's so stupid. Everybody knows it's quite literally fascism when you have drunk driving laws. It's so fucked up. Obviously, all laws are bad, okay, and immoral. Duh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> like that just did not. But end. now it would be considered misinformation if you say, hey, why are there more variants now when there are more people vaccinated than ever? Why are there some doctors and why are there some published papers saying, hey, you know what? If you have a vaccine that isn't or an mRNA injection that isn't entirely effective, that viruses mutate and learn to learn to basically get through yeah. uh, the holes in the defense mechanisms. This is I'm not saying that this is accurate. I'm saying that. Doctors are afraid to even discuss it now because that could be removed as misinformation today, even if we find out tomorrow that it's correct. Wait, did he just say doctors are afraid of doing scientific research on whether or not there are breakthrough cases? Is that what he just said? I didn't misunderstand. Afraid to even discuss it now because that could be removed as misinformation today, even if we find out tomorrow that it's correct. Yeah. Mi a question can't be misinformation. Yeah. Right. I mean, it can if you're like Jesse Ventura, where it's like, I don't know, was, was George W. Bush behind Tower 7 with an Acme plunger and the Saudi prince? I'm just asking questions. All right, well, point different. taken. Yes. But, <laughs> but I agree with your smart. sentiment. It's a leading <laughs> question. Well, here's something else that matters. Yeah, Follow the money. Lead the wind. Wait, so he does recognize that, like, that's exactly what people do, by the way. Like, leading questions like that in an effort to not to really ask questions, but to just spread misinformation. Yes, I yes. get it. Follow the money. Uh, so Joni Mitchell and Neil Young's music, they're owned by uh, Warner Music. Yeah. Okay. BlackRock, 
holds a 1.39% stake in Warner Music. And of course, BlackRock, Elizabeth Warren deemed too big to fail. They right. also have a bunch of real estate holdings that are worth trillions of dollars. I don't know what the number is today. Uh, and they hold a lot of sway over it. There is no more powerful entity right now as far as business interests. When people talk about, ooh, corporate oligarchy, man, look at BlackRock, look at Elizabeth Warren wanting them to be too big to fail. Look at their ownership here with Warner Brothers Music. Okay, shouldn't sound like a lot, 1.39. That's $74 million dollars of oh. Spotify. Now, if you don't remember, 2008. Warner Music, yeah. What did I, I said say? Spotify, yeah. Oh, Warner well, I'm going to get to that in a second, Spotify too. in a minute, yeah. <laughs> well, it does. Brittian slip, foreshadowing. It works. does explain why two people as high as Neil Young and Rogan <laughs> can't find common ground all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> remember they used to tell us people who get high. Wait, it's BlackRock that's actually pushing the COVID misinformation off the airwaves? Is that what he's saying? I will never understand why Steven Crowder even brings up like BlackRock and shit when he's such a corporate dick sucker. Like it doesn't make any sense. I hate when conservatives do this, when they're like, oh, dude, like, oh man, BlackRock, BlackRock is doing this. Okay. What do you think BlackRock likes more, man? The fucking tax cuts and deregulation that you advocate for on a regular basis or people not taking the vaccine? Steven Crowder quite literally advocates for everything that people at BlackRock would make money off of and then turns around and goes, oh man, that's really fucked up that they're taking a stance against COVID vaccines or taking a stance for COVID vaccines and, and, and against COVID misinformation. Hey, they yeah. never they never fight. It's always drunk people. It's like, yeah, they fight sometimes. Yeah, not well, really not Rogan, just Neil Young out of nowhere for some reason. Yeah. Oh, weird. Yeah. I wonder what the... Oh, right, he's owned. Yes. Except when I saw him live, though, he sang an anti-Starbucks song, but this is totally acceptable. Right, yeah, no, exactly. He wants... Starbucks is not even a fraction of what right. BlackRock no. is. <laughs> right. <laughs> now I'm singing for the BlackRock call. Starbucks uh, is bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, they're saying Neil Young personally had to take this decision because BlackRock? What a fucking insane stretch. So what about all the other Warner Music people, dude? Is Neil Young and fucking Jody Mitchell the only two Warner Music artists? What kind of fucking argument is this? Because BlackRock owns 1% of Warner Music that only two fucking artists from Warner Music pulled their music off of Spotify? I've literally never heard a dumber argument. Even if we were to assume that BlackRock's 1% in Warner Music is important enough for them to like urge Warner Music to go out and take action on behalf of BlackRock's ultimate interest of vaccinating everyone, I guess. Why is no one else from Warner Music also pulling their music? What? This doesn't make sense. What percentage of fucking Spotify does BlackRock own? I want to look that up. Like, why wouldn't they just go to Spotify directly? There's no shot BlackRock doesn't own a piece of Spotify too. I'd be surprised. Oh, sorry. Blackstone is private equity. BlackRock is the investment managing company. Oh! Oh! Oh, what? Why did they have to go the long way? Why didn't they just go directly to Spotify? Which is exactly, nearly the same exact fucking number, the same exact percentage. Oh, man, that's crazy. We're really uncovering a lot of conspiracies here today, dude. Why'd they have to go to Warner Music and, like, do it through Neil Young? Look at the total value. He was talking about $74 million of uh, shares that BlackRock owns in fucking Warner Music when they just own $600 million worth of value in Spotify. I love how conservative arguments are built with ticker tape. They're basically built with like shoestrings and they're so fragile that you can destroy it in its entirety with one fucking Google dude with like one Google search result in the right direction and it, it just like immediately falls apart. So 2008, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink, that's an asshole name, he said that BlackRock would punish companies that aren't, quote, woke enough. He said to prosper over time, every company must not only deliver financial performance, that's what a company should do, but also show how it can make a positive contribution to society. And this, of course, was with a liberal uh, woke angle. Just last week, BlackRock punished 53 companies for, quote, climate inaction. Wow. Climate inaction. What does punished mean? I, I don't. I don't know that I want to find out. Yeah, can we find out exactly what the punishment was? Probably some kind of fine or some stern talking to. Did they do like an admonishment thing where they're like, oh, admonish. I love how the UN doesn't punish. First of all, that's just bullshit woke pandering that BlackRock, which is a hyper capitalist institution, is trying to do. It's just a PR stunt. So you're already admitting that they don't fucking care. Like, why are you, then why are you bringing it up? Why are you bringing up the fact that they don't care and they're just fake caring immediately after you said they care so much that they would go to Warner and say, Warner Music, make sure Neil Young pulls his music out of Spotify. But which one is it? Is it that they don't care or they care so much? I don't understand.
British North Korea when yeah, they're yeah. launching rockets like the 4th of July. But if a company doesn't do a, you know, uh, use a tree, plant a tree bin, right. they're going to be punished by this powerful corporation. Daddy BlackRock. Had That's hilarious. I've been Googling so much today, but it's pretty funny to think that North Korea's carbon footprint is even remotely comparable as an entire nation remotely comparable to like i don't know the entire state of arkansas just their fucking yearly electricity consumption for their fridges honestly if we were to look this up i'm willing to bet that our kansas and their yearly energy consumption for their fridges alone is probably fucking higher than north korea's entire country uh and their uh, uh carbon footprint and energy consumption yearly just the fridges is a stretch no you're so wrong Dude, what the fuck are you talking about? There's parts of North Korea that just simply don't have electricity. What are you talking about? The consumption of an average American's fridge is like higher than entire nations sometimes. Like the annual consumption. Like not, na uh, not nations, but like, yeah, here, there it is. My old refrigerator used more electricity than 3.3 billion people. The specification sheet claimed the machine would use 616 kilowatts per year. My kitchen refrigerator versus, versus the world. Today, about 1.2 billion people live in places where per capita electricity use is less than 400 kilowatt hours per year. In sub-Saharan Africa, average consumption is 486 kilowatt hours per capita per year. In Nigeria, the most populous country in Africa, the average is just 145 kilowatt hours per capita per year. DC is in literally Washington City has over three times the amount of emissions that North Korea does. Yeah, there you go. That's why I was yelling at Jordan Peterson for saying everyone needs to be rich in order to combat climate change. He's just straight up fucking wrong on that. Like, absolutely. No one has been more wrong than Jordan Peterson when he said that. Them pick a switch from a tree. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty, well, they wrote a stern letter, Stephen. Yeah, signed by all people there. Now, this is to go back to your point. Do you know who else? Uh, uh, BlackRock. BlackRock owns a huge share in... Spotify. Is he going to mention Spotify? Spotify. Oh, what? Spotify. They what? own 1.37 or about 611 million worth of stock in Spotify. Wow. Now, here's the thing think about that because everyone so why do they go through neil young he just owned himself we talked about how joe rogan all this money and he's dangerous right this is this is everywhere on social media joe rogan's dangerous because he has this money and he's unaccountable joe rogan got i think it was a hundred million dollar deal with spotify but then he also got some stock options so let's call it anywhere between 150 to 200 something million dollars right yeah that's still a drop in the bucket compared to 611 million dollars from blackrock who also have a conflict of interest because they have ownership stakes in other music production companies. This is something that is very dangerous. Now, if I were Joe Rogan at this point, if they start slapping label, keep in mind, Wait, they asked Rogan. Did you just say it's a conflict of interest for an investment firm to own stakes in competing companies? What? I'm a fucking idiotic socialist himbo who doesn't own a credit card. How the fuck do I know more about capitalism you, you have to be, like, exceptionally stupid to not recognize the things you say. Hedging? Unethical. Diversifying your portfolio? Conflict of interest. <laughs> and, you know, to remove 40-something episodes, which he did. Keep in mind that Spotify has had problems. Their employees threatened to walk out with Joe Rogan. Multiple and now times. they're issuing these warnings. It, it wouldn't be beyond the realm of possibility and legally probably defensible if Joe Rogan said, all right, took his ball and walked. He's the most valuable on-air commodity to Spotify, certainly. And BlackRock, BlackRock thinks they have more sway because $611 million, right, in shares that they have in, uh, in Spotify. But if Joe Rogan says, okay, I came over here because YouTube was being, uh, you know, they were censoring me too much. The premise was that Spotify would be free and open. They wouldn't bother me and tell me what to say. You're the dumbest person in America if you think Joe Rogan actually moved to Spotify, not because of $100 million, but because they were censoring him. Yeah, dude, the hundred million dollars was just, you know, icing on the fucking cake, I guess. Jesus Christ. It's becoming too constraining. Now it's too much of a headache. I'm going to walk and go do my own thing somewhere else. Sue me. Guess what? Could be breach and there might not be anything that Spotify can do about it because they have changed the terms. I don't know the exact contract, but I don't think, at least in the court of public opinion, Spotify would be in trouble. You're playing with fire, Spotify. This is the disconnect between the woke companies who pull the strings and the woke people who work in your offices and the people who listen to Spotify. When they right. keep talking about all the money that he has, he's bringing in this money through his entertainment that he's getting a percentage of. Right. 
that's it's completely legitimate what he's earning. Of course. These people going at them is a completely different narrative and a completely different idea than what he's doing. Yeah, well, I mean, well, Barry Manilow has earned Spotify a pretty penny. And by that, I mean one uh, pretty penny. It was pretty shiny, though. <laughs> he framed it, yeah. It came right out of a loafer. <laughs> yeah. yeah the, the punishment, by the way, would have to do with uh, affecting those companies' voting action in the fund. And, and BlackRock is worth $9.46 trillion. $9.46 trillion. That assets under management, basically, yeah. for BlackRock? So. Wow. Yeah. That is insane. Ass hats. Well, the good news is- but I don't get it. Like, this is what you want. I mean, fuck BlackRock, but this is what you fucking want. I don't understand. Why are you acting like this is not what you want? This is what you advocate for every fucking day. Dude, conservatives doing populist anti-corporatist messaging is so funny to me because it's like, dude, you straight up love that. You, you want to suck BlackRock for everything it has. Is Elizabeth Warren, right? The socialist folks, they're looking yeah, out yeah, for yeah. you because they want BlackRock to be too big to fail, which means they can continue acting like this. And when they bankrupt companies or when they have the next crash, you get to bail them out with your tax dollars because yeah. they're too big to fail. Looking out for you. Hey, by the way, as much as I hate them, this show is available on Spotify. So please <laughs> subscribe on Spotify, on Apple, on Android, anywhere that you get your podcasts. Because again, if you're. So the BlackRock conspiracy is that. This gigantic company that owns millions and millions, hundreds of millions of dollars in stakes or in shares in pretty much every fucking company is actually secretly like woke. And that's why they are using their influence over Spotify to make you subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime on the Hasanabi broadcast in order to avoid the top of the hour ad break. Socialism is when capitalism. Yep, is, that's exactly right. Always and forever in perpetuity. Everything that you don't like about capitalism, well, that's actually socialism. Everything that you don't like, that's socialism too. Things that you might like about socialism, well, that's capitalism.